And those of you who have already seen the big book of truths that Joseph Babinski has, uh, has edited, which are the Paget messages from the uh, early 20th century, um, it's a quite a large, thick book, and it's like, you know, it's one of those kind of books that you can beat somebody over the head with and they'll die, you know. <laughs> so, so what Joseph's also done is put together a little book of truths, which is only a few pages, about 100 or so pages, of selected messages about specific spiritual truths that were presented in the Paget messages. So it's a good way to sort of introduce people to, to the Paget messages, and that's available up the back by donation as well that Peter's... Uh, you've, how many copies did you get of these initially? A hundred, hundred initially of those. We you, went through our first hundred of the big ones. So the big, the we're on the second hundred of the big ones already. So awesome. It is awesome, the first, yeah. The first hundred of those. First hundred of these, so <coughs> there you go. What'd they cost to produce, Pete? Around about $12. Around $12 to produce, yeah. <coughs> but it's by donation up the back, so... Yeah, because bear in mind that Joseph does all of this work for free. So, um, and he's not, a, by the way, a very wealthy man. He's uh, quite a poor man, actually. Um, and particularly by USA standards, he's a very poor man. Um, and yet he's been doing this because he just has a deep passion for the pageant messages. So any in, extra, in excess that uh, Peter gets above the cost of producing the books goes, uh, to, it goes across to Joseph. So... Um, so that's I asked him whether I could do them here in Australia. He didn't even hesitate yeah. for one second. He just gave everything. So he, what he's done is he's given all of his work to Peter, like given all of the PDF files and everything to Peter, just so that we can print them here in Australia rather than having to order them from overseas all the time and pay the additional postage costs and all the other the associated costs with it and all that kind and of thing. He's really excited that, that they're getting that, it. That's starting to get it. Yeah, yeah, he is. And Joy? Okay, so if you don't want a printed copy, but you want an electronic copy, um, Joseph's happy for you guys to email that uh, PDF of both books. Uh, they, but not in the same format, no. I have to really put it on the disc in our new copies. So what's your email address again, Joy? So. Hotmail.com. So if you email Joy, she'll be able to email you with those. I'll actually, if you can email them to me, Joy, I can put them as a download on the on our site as well. So that way you don't get inundated. Well, maybe, would, would you consider putting uh, the, the fact on the website that they can get the book? Because Tony says they can get it from Lulu in America, uh, the Paget book. Ah, yes. Yeah, I need to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a few adjustments I'd need to make to the website, but I do that when I get around to it. <laughs> Sometimes. It depends on whether we stay at a place that's got some no, Wi-Fi. That's, that's all right. That's all right. All right. Um, now what I'd like to do is actually focus on questions from spirits uh, because I, I really feel like a lot of them would like to ask some questions. And uh, perhaps we could start with some of the questions that have been mailed to us, babe. Can we do that? And then... Um, These are actually channeled by Natalie uh, last night. Yep. So I'll just, there's long conversation, so I'll just summarise. Summarise the questions. Some of the questions. Yep. So um, the, we'll go with these ones. They're from Sh a lady called Shirley. Yep. Um, and she's passed uh, not that long ago and she doesn't understand the place she's in. And why do I feel like I'm alive but no one can see me? Um, my family's still crying all the time. I know that I'm gone but I'm still here. I don't understand where here is. It's a black, dark, scary, d dark and scary. People sad, angry, lost. People reminds me of ghosts wailing and I feel fearful and alone. I can't leave and no one can hear me. And she says... Her main questions are, how or why do we have to feel our emotions? Why can't we progress through faith? I believe there is a God, but I am not in heaven. Why is my faith that God is real not enough? 
Can I, can I just, instead of reading them all out, can we just go back to the first set of questions? Sure. And one of the first things that Shirley needs to understand is that actually she's on the earth still. But when you're a spirit, the way you see the earth is a lot different than when you're alive on earth. The way you see the earth when you're a spirit is it looks like a very dark, dark and sort of a dingy sort of a place, right? Mangy sort of a place. It's quite dark. You start, you see all the people who are on earth as if you're seeing spirits. Does that make sense? So what's happening to this lady is that she's actually alive. She's passed, but she's alive still. She's actually earthbound but she's seeing the earth in a totally different way now because she's not governed by the sunlight anymore to way, as a way of seeing the earth, but rather by the earth's true condition. So when you're a spirit and you pass over into the spirit world, you don't see the earth like you see it in your state like you are now. You see the earth as through your true, the, the earth's true condition. Remember I said the earth's true condition is in the midpoint of the first sphere or in the hell, a bit in the hells of the first sphere. So when you actually see the earth, the earth is a complete reflection of the soul condition of the sum total of the soul condition of everyone on it. Does that make sense? So what she's seeing is actually the same thing she was seeing when she was here on earth, but now she's seeing, them th seeing it through her spirit body's eyes. And she's seeing it for what it really is, which is quite a dark and, uh, and, and depressing place. Right? And by the way, all of you who, who, ever, who ever pass, you will actually experience this unless the earth gets into a better condition. Now as the people on earth raise their condition, so does the brightness of the, what a spirit would see on earth. So when a spirit sees you and you've released a lot of your emotional condition, they'll see you as more of a solid shape that they can actually see and that they'll see you as a brighter person, someone with a bit of light. So this is why a lot of spirits use the term light. Right? And this is why I also use the term in the first century, let your light shine before men. Because actually when you're in a better spiritual condition, there is a light that emanates from you. Right. Now what's happening for, the, for Shirley is she's alive, she still sometimes thinks she's on the earth because she is on the earth and what's drawing her to the earth is because of her recent passing, her family still is in grief. I have a strong suspicion, and I don't know whether it's true, but I have a strong suspicion she's actually a mother who's got living children on the earth. You didn't ask her. Um, but, but what's happening is the grief of her living relatives is pulling her back to the earth and they're crying all the time. But the problem is they're not actually crying about their causal emotion about the issue of grief. What they're doing, the crying is a huge projection at Shirley and Shirley feels drawn back to the earth because of this huge projection. So she's not even gone to the spirit world yet, right? She's just earthbound on the earth being with the people on the earth who are actually in this state where they're grieving. Now, because of that, she goes to speak with them, but nobody listens to her. Does that make sense? She's seeing them as sort of ghostly figures who are crying that she recognises as people that she knows, but they look very, very different to her, and she's seeing them as that, but she goes to speak to them, but because they're in the physical and not in the spirit body like she is, she can't interact with them. And by the way, this happens with almost every single person who passes who doesn't know anything about the spirit world. So you imagine the grief when you first pass, being pulled back into the grief, and you're there, you're totally confused, everything's dark and really mangy to look at, and it, you're like the real spiritual condition of the earth is quite poor. And so you feel like you're in a dark, lonely place. You never see any sunlight because the sun doesn't matter anymore to you because it's, it's not the same eyes you're looking at everything about anymore. It's not the material eyes you're looking through. It's the spirit body's eyes you're looking through. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, now, you will have to give me some feedback. Is it making sense to Shirley? 
Just let yourself feel whether it's making sense to her. No, I got it wrong. That was Tom. Sorry? <laughs> that was Tom, sorry. So a man. Okay, so they're just realising some things about the truth of it all. All right, so it's as a man, is it, Tom? I'm not sure. Sorry, yeah, that's yeah, okay. So Tom. So he's alive, no one can see him. Obviously there's a lot of grief involved on the earth that's drawing him back. Now, what he needs to what he needs to do is he needs to allow himself to feel these projections that are coming at him and why he wants to remain with them. Because it, it's very unsettling for a person in the spirit world to actually have to stay in this very dark environment on the earth when where they could go might even be much brighter than what the earth is actually at, even though it's still in the first sphere where they might go. So what happens a lot is people feel drawn to the earth environment until the grieving stops. And what we need to do is help, pe help spirits to not hook into the grieving of others. But he's hooking into the grief of others even after he's passed. And that's kept him in this location. He also made some other statements of the, in the same session, section there. Um, yeah, he's saying that it's, it's black, dark and scary. He's sad, angry, lost people, reminds me of ghosts wailing. He can't leave. Um, what did, and she asks, what did you expect? And he says, I don't know, cloud gates, you know, like heaven. Yes, a bit like the cartoons. And where you are does not look like that. No, it's like something out of Hellraiser. Lots of scared people. Yeah. Mm. All right. So can you see why a lot of spirits get really frightened and afraid when they pass? Because they don't know the truth of where they are. They don't know the truth of even the Earth's condition. And so naturally they feel very frightened and scared. And AJ, he says, I feel like I should be doing something but I don't know what. Okay. So the truth is that when they pass, they, most people do have a feeling that they need to go somewhere else other than that. But what's drawing him is the grief. So my suggestion to him firstly is to release this grief that he has about his passing. I have a f strong feeling he passed suddenly like... Um, right, um, if we can just give... Um, is there a mic for... Yeah. So he said it was an accident. He said it was an accident and it was um, traumatic for him. Yeah. How old was he when he passed? In? Any idea the age? No. No. 25. 25. So you can imagine a 25-year-old man passing, how much of an unlived life he's, feel he's, going, he's had and, and how much grief there's going to be in his family about his passing. There's a girlfriend too, I think, is there? With a lot of grief. Yeah. So, yeah. So Tom needs to let himself feel, let, let himself feel the grief of his unlived life. So he needs to let himself feel that. And, and once he does that, he'll be able to notice that there are some spirits around him who look much happier than other spirits. And those spirits, any spirit that looks brighter or happier, um, he, 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 my suggestion to him is to trust them and to trust that where they, they can take him to a place that's a much better place than staying here on earth, hooked into these emotions of people on earth. Now he can come back and visit earth whenever he likes. So he doesn't have to feel like he's going to leave it for good or leave his friends on earth for good. But it's better if he learns about the truth about his condition and the truth about the spirit world in a different location than trying to live, learn about it still on the earth plane. He's asking where will they take him? Um, where they'll take him initially will just be a place of sort of like convalescence initially and then they'll take him to a place that actually matches his soul condition. And if I could just explain to him what his soul condition is, the soul condition is a sum total of your beliefs your unhealed and healed emotions and your desires and passions. So um, your, um, where you'll be taken will be a place that matches those conditions. Now you can grow from that place. So you can actually move from that place to an even better place and then to an even better place again. But that's about learning how to 
move from place to place in the spirit world and these brighter spirits will have, be able to help him move from that place, from the place where he'll be first taken to other places of brightness but it will depend upon his own desire. So every time he desires to come back to the earth to see what's going on here then he'll be drawn back to the earth. Every time he desires to learn something new the people who he learns from will tell him something new. Every time he desires something that's when it will be enacted. So as soon as he has a desire to come back to earth to check out his girlfriend who's grieving for him, he will be automatically by her side. Every time, that he, every time he feels about his mum and dad, he'll be automatically by their side. But every time he feels about learning about new things, he'll be automatically by the side of people who will be able to teach him those things. Now my suggestion for him is to let himself feel the grief that he has about having his life cut short and understand that life is eternal and this is just one little phase in his whole life. The reason for his death I think is important for him to understand too and that is all accidents occur through law of attraction events of unhealed emotions. So, so he needs to understand that his life being cut short was about an emotion that he himself has within himself and he needs to allow himself to feel about those emotions as well. Now the spirits who can help him are those brighter spirits and there's two types of brighter spirits. There's the brighter spirits who are on the natural love path who actually will teach him about the laws of the universe and morals and a lot of other intellectual things and then there's a whole group of bright spirits who are on the divine love path and they'll teach him about connecting to God and connecting to soulmate and connecting to all of these and connecting to love and all of these kind of things. And it's going to be completely up to his desire which one is, or groups of those spirits that he listens to. My suggestion is to listen to the divine love spirits because they're the ones who can tell, teach him the truths of the universe but often he might feel drawn into the natural love spirits because he's got that sort of intellectual bent and a bit of avoidance of emotion going on so he may feel more drawn to those. And it's up to him which choice is made. But if he listens to the brighter spirits no matter what path they're on at least he'll be taken to a different location that's not as dark and, and un, you know, uncomfortable for him. The earth, can, the earth uh, sphere, this earth plane is a very uncomfortable place for a spirit. Um, any spirit who's not of it, you know, in, in, or any spirit in any condition really unless they're in really deep uh, evil condition is not often attracted to the earth plane as a result. He feels a lot of fear as I can feel it. Yep, his fear is about not knowing about the future and how the future will plan out and, and what he needs to do is think a little, he's allowed to see that when he was on earth he didn't really know what his future was either. He thought he knew but he didn't really know, right? And the key is to give up this idea of wanting to know what the future is planned for you but allow yourself to follow your desire now. So what do you desire to know? Ask yourself what do you really want to know? What do you want to find out about? What, what kind of happiness do you want? Do you want to connect to God or do you not want to connect to God or you're not really interested in God? What do you really want? And let yourself follow those desires. Now if you, you can also develop desires and this is a part of one of the things we don't often learn on earth is we often have a lot of our desires suppressed and so we don't connect with our desires. So allow yourself to connect with desire. What are your desires? And allow yourself to also grow desires that you may not currently have. In the end, our life is eternal as far as it is known whether what it, whatever path we choose. On the divine love path, your life is guaranteed to be immortal, right? Because you receive divine love and for, for you to die would mean that God would actually die or God's love would die. So on the divine love path, you're actually immortal. On the natural love path it's not known whether you're immortal or not but you can choose either of those paths. He's asking will the bright spirits give him some options because he's not sure what he desires. Well um, yeah um, the bright spirits who are on the divine love path will certainly give him some options. The brighter spirits that are on the natural love path will feel a lot more impelled to tell them what they think he should do. 
All right? So the divine love spirits will generally give more options, be open more about all of the options available, whereas the natural love spirits will say, oh, we think you should do this, come along with us. Now, now the people who give you options are more loving than the people who don't give you any options. So that's one thing for him to remember for the future. And in the end, if he allows himself to actually investigate all options, and uh, there's a high possibility that he'll choose the option that results in his long-term benefit he has ahead of him the ability to experience bliss, um, just like any other spirit does. And many of the spirits on the divine love path who have made the condition into a one minute with God, they are in a state of bliss. They are what he would call angels if he sees them. He can see some of them around him. Yes. So they look like sort of angels to him. Yeah. Really bright. Yeah. And large. And large, yeah. yeah. And their body and soul is an expression of the love they've received. So if he trusts them, he will be able to grow into being like them. Right? But if he doesn't trust them and he trusts some other spirits on the natural love path that look more like humans to him, then he will grow on the path that they've chosen to grow along. So it's up to him which path he chooses. <laughs> He wants to thank you. How are you coping, Natalie? You're pretty emotional about that one. Yeah. So he understands where he is now. And there's all these dimensions in the spirit world. There's 22 of them at the moment. And he's in the very first one. He really wants to help his family and especially his girlfriend. And that's going to be very difficult. The reason why is they have a whole group of emotions that they're working their way through and while people are very emotional it's very difficult for a spirit to help them. Um, understand that each one of those people including his girlfriend has, a, has guides who are trying to help them right now. They have spirits around them. Can, they, can he see some of those spirits around them? Yes, he can see them. Okay, so, so they are already being helped as best as, as best as it can be. And down the track, he'll probably be able to help them. But first, he needs to help himself to understand what's really going on. He asks if the bright spirits, if he learns to be like the large bright spirits, can he help them then? Oh, yeah. Like then it's very, a lot easier to help a person in that state. And also, you have a lot more happiness in that state anyway, personally, even if you can't help the person. Whereas at the moment, he's very distressed because he feels like he's not helping the, them with their grief. And the truth is that he isn't. Every time he visits them, he's noticed that they cry even more. Has he noticed that? And they get even more distressed? Yes. Yeah, and it just feels terrible for him? It makes him feel worse. Yeah, that's right. So, so what he needs to do is allow himself to just leave them temporarily. It's not a permanent thing. And just listen to some advice from these brighter spirits. And he'll be able to help his family a lot better then if he does that. At the moment, he's hooking very much into their grief. And because he's so hooked into their grief... He's not, allowing, he's not allowing himself to grow. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a lot for him to learn now and the beauty of him learning it is if he learns as much as he can learn, by the time any of his relatives pass, he'll know how to help them too. It'll be very powerful for all of them. Yeah. And there's also, he feels like his life's cut short, but actually there's so much to do in the spirit world, much more to do than on earth. And, and there's a lot more to enjoy as long as you don't get stuck in the earth plane. If you get stuck in the earth plane, there's not much joy that to be had. Mm. He wants to go with the, the large bright spirit. No worries. We'll let him go then. And um, what else was there, Mary? Um, there's another spirit, Shirley. Yep. And she asks... How, I think I asked you before, how, why do we have to feel our emotions? Why can't we progress through faith? I believe there is a God, but I'm not in heaven. Why is my faith that God is real not enough? So let's, let's deal with those questions first. Um, what kind of faith was she? Do you know, Natalie? Like Lutheran. Lutheran, yep. Okay, so, so we have a Lutheran woman who believed in faith. And in fact, um, one of the Lutheran teachings is about faith and not works. Like, so, so in other words, you have, the faith is the crux of the, of the entire teaching, if you like. What they meant by faith was a belief in God and a belief in the sacrifice of 
Jesus, and I understand she's got more questions to ask about myself. But let's deal with these issues first. Shirley's issue is that, is that she's always felt all of her life that you only had to have faith in God and faith in Jesus to actually arrive in the spirit world in a place that's good. Does that make sense to everyone? So, so what she's done is she's passed, arrived in the spirit world in a place that's not as good as she's expected. How would she describe the place that she's arrived in? Cold. Cold. Dark. People don't know why they're here. Yeah. And lots of people are angry. Lots of angry. There. Okay. So lots of angry people not understanding why they are where they are. Are they religious angry? They're all fairly re they were religious when they were on earth? They're angry with God. They don't believe they should be here. Okay. So, so can you see, like, they pass. Here's God somewhere up there. And these people are angry with God because they don't believe they should be in the first sphere somewhere in darkness because they had a belief in God. And they feel that the belief in God should have got them to a much higher condition. Does that make sense? That's what she feels? Yes. Yep. And that's not a truth. Remember in the first century, and I'll quote some Bible verses that she would have read. In the first century, I said that even if you believe in me, there are many people who believe in me that I'd say to them, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Did she remember that? Like, it, it required them to actually, it was in Matthew, in Matthew 7? Yes. Yep, and she's read a Bible fairly well, so she, she would know those scriptures. So what's happening for her is... Like most people who are religious, she hasn't understood the laws involved in the spirit world and she also hasn't understood love and how that impacts upon their entire, entire um, process once you pass. Now, where a person is in the spirit world is a direct reflection of their soul condition. So at the moment, you've got a lot of people surrounding you who are angry with God, right, and disappointed with God and disappointed with their faith. Very. Isn't that not the case? Very. So, obviously faith doesn't save you like you thought. But why? Why not? Why? Because the soul condition of the person is what matters. And remember I alluded to this in the Bible. If you read the words of the Bible, you, you will see that I alluded to this. Remember I said some things like this. The meek shall inherit the earth. Do you remember I said that? Yes. Right. Now, what is meekness? Humble. Being humble. Right. So there is a requirement of being humble. What's humble? Humble is not thinking that you know everything about everything. That's not humble. Humble is being able to be taught things, new things. Right. Now, when she was on earth, she believed she had the truth, right? Yes. Really firmly. She feels that they were taught to be strong for God's word. Yeah, yeah. But the trouble is, the thing that she was trusting in as God's word wasn't actually God's word. It was just what men had decided was God's word. There's a lot of pain in that for her, isn't there? She, what she's done is she's trust, her, trusted her entire life, right, in a document, the Bible, that actually now she can see must have contained falsities because if it contained all the truth she would already be where she would want to be. Can you see that? So all of a sudden she comes face to face with that. Her first instinct is to blame God. Many Christians who pass by the way pass and their first instinct is to blame God and to go off of God altogether. That they're so angry with God in the process of passing because they're not where they expected to be because of their faith. What matters is what your soul condition is. So sh something for Shir Shirley, soul condition is about the sum total of your emotions, your desires, your passions, your longings, and many other things, your intentions and so forth. Now, the sum total of that adds up to your soul condition. 
So if your soul condition is full of emotions that are angry, resentful, upset, judgmental of others, remember I mentioned judgment in the first century you, and there's quotations of that in the Bible. Remember I said when you judge other people, it's, it's worse from you from a soul perspective than if somebody tied something around your neck and threw you in the sea. Remember I said that? In the first century, she's read that. Yes. She's read that from the Bible. So what, what, what's going on there is that, see, often what happens is when we believe we have the truth, we then judge everyone else, right, as bad or wrong or whatever, right? And that sets up a poor soul condition. And this is something we need to work our way through. Now, my advice to her is there are other Lutherans, including Luther himself, who have progressed beyond this point. So Luther is one of our spirit friends in the celestial heavens and he had to work through all of these same emotions that she's going to have to work her way through. Now, would she like a few of the Lutheran spirits to come to her who, are, who have worked, away through, worked their way through all these things? Yes. Okay, so we'll get a few of them to come. So they're now, there now. She you can, can see them. them. Now my suggestion to her is to listen very carefully to them because they're going to present something to her that is very different to what she's read in the Bible. But these same Lutheran spirits have had to go through exactly the same experience as she does and that is giving up false beliefs and learning about what the truth really is. Does that make sense? So she's going to need to go through that process of giving up false beliefs that she's gotten from the Bible and learning about what the truth really is. And these Lutheran spirits can help her do that. Does that make sense? Can she trust them? Well, the key rule of the spirit world is anybody that's in a brighter condition than yourself, you can trust more than you can trust yourself. <laughs> <laughs> then the Does that make sense? That's easy. So it's quite easy. You can look at the person's spirit body compared to your own, and if they're brighter than you, you can trust them more than you can trust yourself. All right. However, there are two forms of progression and she would have heard me mention this to Tom. The two forms of progression are on the natural love path which is developing your own love and developing morally which is what she really did as a Lutheran, tried to do. The other path which is a divine love path which these spirits that I've invited to come are on is something that I taught when I was in the first century and she'll recognise some of the teachings from the Bible and my suggestion is to have a listen to them. And if she has a listen to them, they're brighter than her, she'll be able to work through her emotions as to how to trust the truth in the end. So they're not going to tell her that, that she's got to do anything. Okay? So they're not like a minister on earth who told her that she's got to do this and she's got to do that. Right? Yep. They will let her follow her desires to investigate things of truth. So she doesn't have to believe everything up the front, but she can actually trust them to show her how to actually determine truth as well. All right? Remember I said in the first century, and it's written in the Bible again, if you let your light shine before men, can you see now how in the spirit world there's different spirits and you can see some of them are really dark yes. and some of them are really light? Yes. They're light because they have more love. Right? And so what you're going to learn all about now is love and not faith. So you give up the idea of having to learn about faith and start focusing on learning about love. Yep. How's she feeling? Do you want to talk to them? They're ready to talk to her. So. Better. She feels like <coughs> she can trust them. All right. She had a few more questions that she might want to hang around for the answers to. So we'll just uh, have a listen to some of those questions. Uh, why when there are so many spirits here, if you are who you say you are, if you are Jesus, why did you come back to earth when there are so many more people here who could use you or teaching or truth, as you call it? We outnumber those on earth by so much. Why have you forsaken us for them? So I can, I, can I address that issue first? All right. A good question, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what, what the problem is for herself is that she's hearing me say that I'm Jesus and then she's going, well, hang on a sec, I believed in Jesus when I was on earth, right? So, you know, and now I'm in the spirit world and all my belief seems to be false now and, like, so there's a lot of mistrust there. And then, and then why aren't I helping her? Because she's calling on Jesus, 
and she's called on Jesus most of her most life, her life. Right? Yeah. Well, the reason why we returned to Earth is because myself and Mary thought it was a really, really lovely opportunity to connect with a heap of people at the source of the problem, the source of the problem. You see, the reason why there is so many people in the spirit world in the earth plane or in the first sphere, right? And by the way, there's more people in those locations than there are on earth. So there's billions and billions and billions of people in these locations. And um, the reason why we thought we'd come to earth is because we want to actually stop the problem at its source rather than try to always cure the effect, which is when after the person passes into the spirit world, there's the effect then of all these damaging teachings on earth. So if we can correct a lot of these damaging teachings on earth, what it means then is when people pass, they won't go through the same experiences that she's currently going through. So as soon as we learned how to return to earth, and that took me nearly 2,000 years to learn, because I'm a slow learner, right? <laughs> It took me 2,000 years to learn how to do that and as soon as we learned how to do that, we decided we wanted to do that. And once we decided we wanted to do that, then there was this whole series of things that were put in motion to make that happen, that we put in motion to make happen. Now, the reason why we did that, just to reiterate for her, is because we wanted to address the problems of the spirit world at the source of the problem, which is the belief systems on earth. She understands. Yep. And so that's why we return to earth. There's another advantage of coming to earth though. Coming to earth, there's a higher likelihood she will listen even to me than if I came from the spirit world to visit her. Because when I came, if I came from the spirit world to visit her, she would expect me to be God. She was told in her earth-based teaching that I was God. Yes. Right? She believed in a triune God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit being one, right? Yes. And so she was told that I was God. So if I appeared to her as a man, would she even have believed that I was Jesus? No. No. So even if I could have helped her in the spirit world, there's a high likelihood she would never have listened to me. Right? She still feels abandoned. Yeah, she feels abandoned and that's an emotion she will need to feel. I haven't abandoned her. God is always with her for a start. And I'm, I'm not abandoning anybody by being here. Right? I'm just trying to correct some teachings that have caused a lot of trouble in the spirit world and on earth. Yeah. She's finding it hard, but she understands. God has not abandoned her either. She just hasn't learned through her teachings of how to connect to God. Remember in the Bible, I talked, to, talked in the Bible when I talked to Nicodemus, I spoke to him about the new birth. Remember I said to him that he's got to become born again to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, that's right. why she asked you into her heart. And, and, she, and, and she's never really understood that on earth, has she? Like what that meant. She had come up with a lot of thoughts and philosophies about it, but never really understood what it meant. By the way, it didn't mean being born into my blood, as many many uh, Christians believe. What it means is she would go through a soul transformation, a personal transformation, her emotional transformation, her desires will all transform into becoming at one with God. She remembers that I said that that was possible, right? Yes. That I wanted everyone to become at one with God just like I was at one with God. Remember that? Yes. So what these spirits are going to show her is how to become at one with God. But it's not by faith, it's by love that it occurs, by receiving God's love it occurs. And the problem is, is that when she was on earth, she was so stuck in the dogma and teachings that there was very little love from God that could enter her. She says she loves God very much, but she judged many who didn't love him. Yes. And wants to know if that's why she's here. That's one of the reasons why she's there, yes, certainly. As soon as you judge another, remember I also said, how you treat my brother is how you treat me. Remember I said that? So yes. how, how you treat the littlest person on earth is how you would have normally treated me. So what did I mean by that? I mean that if you were looking down on a little person on earth, that's the same as looking down on me. Can you see? That's that emotion in her of condescension towards others. 
Yes. And that is an emotion that she will definitely need to deal with to become at one with God, along with many others, by the way, that she has. These spirits who are bright will actually be able to show her those emotions and help her work her way through them. Thank you. No worries. Um, she had another question. Can I just answer that? Uh, it was along the same lines. I feel that he has abandoned so many in a place where there is much confusion and doubt and suffering. And if he is the Messiah, if he is God's messenger of truth, then how could he come back to a place where so few are willing to hear his words? Mm. <laughs> That's another good question, isn't it? Um, well, firstly, there is this... Because, see, a lot of Christians pass with the belief that... that if I'm God and then I'm on the earth again, then I've abandoned all of them in the spirit world. Obviously, I'm trying to teach that I'm not God, I'm just a person. So I'm just a person like she is. Right? And that was my teaching in the first century. I said exactly the same thing. When people ask me in the first century, like, you know, um, what, what do you know about things? And I'd say, well, I don't know what God knows. Right? Because nobody really knows everything God knows still. Right? So, so we'd, this is the way we would speak and, uh, and talk about these issues. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people who are religious have then gone and taken that aside and they've put that aside and they've forgotten that actually I was just teaching that I was a man who was connected to God or at one with God. That's all I was teaching at the time. So then, of course, when I have my own personal life, many of them feel like they're, that they're being abandoned by me. The truth is I'm allowed to have my personal life and enjoy the things that I desire, just like you're allowed to have your personal love, life and loves and enjoy the things you desire. So there is anything that I give you other than that is just a gift, is it not? Just like anything you give me other than that is just a gift. Does that make sense? That we can either have gratitude for or reject. Now, many people who are Christian have huge expectations on me as an individual. They then think that I must do what they perceive in their mind I should do. And what they're going to need to do is give that up because in the end, this is about developing their relationship with God and not their relationship with me. So what I would like Shirley to do is to develop her relationship with God and not with me. I would like her to focus on her relationship with God rather than focusing her attention on me, Jesus. Right? And, and if she has issues with God about what God has done, then talk about them with God. They are not my issues. I believe God's done exactly the right thing for us. And that's what I taught in the first century and that's what she says she believes, but now right at this moment she's not sure about that because she's in a darker place than what she expected to arrive in. And she, she wants to have a relationship with God especially if you're not God. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's beautiful. And this is the problem, I, th this is one of the teachings I want to address, is because in the end, when people try to develop a relationship with me, they're trying to substitute me for God, right? And the problem with that is I can't do what God can do. God can have a relationship with every single one of her children without any interruption whatsoever from any other child. So all of us can reach the condition of one or even a greater condition of love and, and God can maintain those relationships as individual relationships. I don't have the capacity to do that. Now my capacity to do that grows as I grow towards God but I don't have the capacity to have a personal relationship with 70, 80, 90 billion people all at the same time like God does. Right? God does have that capacity. And, and far more in excess of that capacity. So, so if she can appreciate that what she's done is she's heavily invested in me being God and then projected on me all these things that I should do that actually I can't do because I'm not God. Only God can do them. And if she can allow herself to start to connect to God directly without going through me, right, then she'll be much happier. 
she doesn't want to waste any more time and wants that's, to talk that's to good. That's the good. other okay. spirits. Yeah, no worries, that's good. So let her, we'll let her go. Okay. Is there any more there? That was All right, who else would like? James, we have a mic over here. <coughs> There's a, a friend of mine who passed about oh, 18 months ago is here. He's a man, Stuart. Yep. Um, and he's, um, he feels like he's going mad. He, he was a man who was very ill with cancer, but who died very suddenly and unexpectedly. How do you spell his name? U U-A-R-T. Yeah, I thought so. He, he died <laughs> <laughs> suddenly and unexpectedly. And um, I've spoken with him before about his having passed. Yep. But uh, he... <laughs> What really bothers him is that his wife is so angry with him. She is just seems to be in a rage with him. She's passed too. No, no, she's, she's on earth. She's on earth. Yep. And she seems to be constantly in a rage with him. He's he's been listening to what's happening, and he's never had any belief in a god. Yep. But he's always tried to follow the golden rule. His guiding light was always do unto others what they should do unto you and that's what he's always done. And now he's in a dark place where she's really angry with him and no one else seems to want anything to do with him. But he's feeling really alone and lost. Can you describe the location a little? Um, he, he's, it's a pretty dark location where he is. Can he see his wife? Uh, say again. Can he see his wife? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. he can see her. Yeah. Okay. Where do you, where do you feel he is? Yeah. He's on the earth plane. Yes, he's on the earth plane. Yeah. 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 So that's the first thing. He's sitting on the earth plane. Yeah, he's been on the whole time. Yeah. He's been in here the whole time, and he's directly drawn to his wife yeah. through his wife's anger. What I want to do is discuss with him some of her emotions as well as his, if we can do that. Um, <laughs> His wife has always been angry with him. He finds that hard to believe. Well, why can he now feel her anger when yeah, he couldn't before? Yeah, because he said all he, ever, all he says, all he ever did was try to please her. Spot on. <laughs> hmm. He has an emotion. Please the angry woman. Hmm. So every time she's angry, because of his emotion, please the angry woman, right, is there. He will feel drawn to her, drawn back to the earth plane, trying to please, trying to please. Still, he's still acting out exactly the same life yeah. that he had before he passed. Mm. Now, unless he deals with this emotion, he will never leave her. He will feel drawn to her, drawn to her anger, drawn to her anger completely. Now, this is not about her anger, it's actually about his mother. Emotionally it's about his mother. right? So he needs to look at how he spent most of his childhood pleasing angry mother. Can you he remember had, that? He had to look after her all the time. Yes, always. Yeah. So he learned, he got into this pattern of pleasing the angry woman. And the problem with pleasing the angry woman is the angry woman's never going to be pleased until she actually works through why she's angered. Now, inside, underneath her anger is a lot of fear and underneath a lot of fear is a lot of grief, right, that she feels towards men, that she, instead of working her way through this, wants to project at him that he's to blame for it all, all the time. Mm. She chose him in order to project all of her hatred towards men and get away with it. That's it's, it's like he's shaking his head. He, he you know, just finds it so hard to... To accept. To hear, yeah. yeah. Now, every time that he tries to please the angry woman, he'll be drawn back to the earth plane. Now, the earth plane is a dark place for him to see. He will see his wife. Can he see his wife? You can see yeah. her as a really dark shape. Yes. Even darker than himself, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's actually brighter than she is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, she is in this really dark place projecting anger at him. And he is being drawn to her anger because of his fear of dealing with a woman's anger. Mm. So he is actually very afraid 
of working through the emotion of his wife's anger, which is actually about his mother's anger. Mm. Now, my suggestion to him again is to, instead of, instead of continuing this relationship, which is a very codependent and unloving relationship, he understands what I mean by that? Yes. What was he, what was he doing when he was on earth? He, he was a school teacher. Right, okay. Mm. So he was heard through his own reading about codependency. Yes. Yeah, mm. Where you have one person having an addiction that the other person's satisfying. Yes. His wife has an addiction of being angry towards men. He is satisfying it by having this fear that he has of what will happen if I don't please the angry woman. And what he needs to do is under, have a look at underneath the fear is a lot of grief about never being able to please mum. Mm. And he needs to allow himself to feel through those emotions. Does that make sense? Yeah. To him? Now, what he can do is he, he's, never, he's, he's not looked a, above himself very much. No. He's only looked at his wife pretty yep. much. Yep. And he feels like this tugging. And he yeah. can, see, can he see the energy stream that's coming from her? There's this, can you yeah. see that really dark, reddish, terrible looking yeah. energy stream and he can feel it entering him right he, yeah. can, he can see it entering his body mm. right mm. that's her anger projection that he's accepting because of his fear yeah and that anger projection is drawing him back into this relationship he feels like a fish on a line that's that's yeah. it that's exactly mm. what it is at the moment a fish on a line mm. he's being drawn through his fear into calming down the woman's anger he feels that if he could calm down the woman's anger, then this red line won't go to him anymore. Right? Mm, but the mm. thing is it will because the only person that can really stop it going to him is his wife has to stop projecting it. That's the only person that's going to stop it going to him. The only other alternative for him is to release himself from it by dealing with the fear that allows it to enter him. So at the moment, his fear of the angry woman is allowing this angry stream, instead of to bounce off of him, it enters him emotionally mm. and he mm. can see where it's entering. Where mm. is it entering? Right in, here, right in right. his heart. Yeah. Yeah. And it's entering there and it just feels like a fish hook drawing him back into his life. Mm. Okay, so what, what he needs to do is allow himself to release that particular emotion, this fear of other people's grief. Does that make sense to him? Now, if he looks a layer bigger than himself, right at the moment he will see that there's some number of brighter spirits around him, right? Male spirits who are yeah. brighter than he is. Yeah. Right? Now, general rule in the spirit world always is if they're brighter than me, I can trust them more than I can trust myself. <laughs> okay. All right? Yeah. Brighter means more harmonious with love. He's smiling about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he just remembers that. That's yeah. very important. Now, if he listens to them, he will be able to now work through this emotion with their assistance and disconnect himself from this relationship that he's still got going on with his wife. Yeah. Right? Once he disconnects from that relationship, he will feel free now to investigate the new location where he is, the spirit world. And he'll be able to leave the earth plane. But, but, but what happens to her then? She needs to work yeah. through her emotions. He can visit her whenever he yeah. wants. But because, he, because from there, once he deals with this emotion of grief towards his mother, right? then her emotion of anger towards him will just bounce off of him. He won't even feel it enter him anymore. Mm. At the moment it's entering his heart. It won't enter his heart anymore once he mm. deals with that grief about his mother. But, he, but he's really worried about her. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That's yeah. part of the emotion. Mm. He's really worried about his mother. Yeah. Right? And what he's going to need to do is stop doing that and feel the grief about never being able to please her. Yeah. Does that make sense yeah, to him? In a, in a way that feels wrong to him, but he can understand it's, what you're saying. It's yeah. definitely going to feel wrong to him, yeah. and he needs to allow the process to continue. Mm. Because what, what is going to happen, if, if, it does, if, if he continues doing what he's doing, he mm. is going to feed his wife with her addiction, which just makes her condition worse. Mm. Mm. Right? So he's actually harming her right at the moment by hooking into her condition. Yeah. She feels completely justified to project all this anger and rage at him mm. and he feels completely justified to, because he's afraid of his mother's grief, to actually do anything else than hook back into her. Yeah. So intellectually he can see that, yeah. but emotionally mm. he's struggling with this. Yeah. 
right? And what I'm suggesting to him is these spirits yeah. here who are with him have worked through this emotion. Yeah. So they know how to help him to work through this emotion yeah. so that he releases from this gap. Yeah. Does that make sense yep. to you? Yeah. Mm. So what all, he, all he needs to do now is just trust the communication that he has with them and remember that one rule. Yep. If they're brighter than me, I can trust them more than I can trust myself. Yeah, yeah. Right? He can relate to that because he, he had a great desire to help other people when he was here and he can relate to yep. being helped. Yeah. Yep. yep, so allow himself to be helped. He's going to feel it very foreign because he spent all of his life trying to please this woman mm. that he married mm. and the, all of his life prior to the marriage to please mm. his mm. mother. Mm. Right? So it's a very mm. long addiction that he's yeah. going to need to remove from his own soul <laughs> before he can progress. Mm. Yeah. How does he feel with all that? You feel, uh, there's a big change in his feeling state. A big he, change. He was feeling that he was to blame for his wife's projections before, yes? Yeah, yeah. He, yes, and he's not to blame for his wife's projections mm. at all. His wife's projections are the result of her childhood, yeah, <coughs> not yeah, his, yeah. not his emotions. And he has tried yeah. to do his best to help her yeah. all of his life and she's still angry with him. And when he thinks about it, he, she mm. was still angry with him on earth it's as well. It's a huge really. change in the, in the feeling that, yeah. you know, that, that I get from him at this stage. Yeah. So he'll be right to be able to follow the advice of these yeah. spirits? Yeah, he, he says thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Yeah. It's my pleasure. Funny that he comes to me, eh? Sorry? I said, funny that he comes to me. <laughs> so can you explain that comment to the rest of the audience? <laughs> the issues that Stuart has are precise to the issues that I have in my life. They're exactly the same things and they're exactly the issues that I'm confronting very deeply right now and that I've, I've just come to a, a very deep realisation as to how, how profound these are in my life and how much they've permeated everything I've ever done yeah. in my whole life and, yeah. and just how much they, they stop me right now. They, and they stop you from experiencing your desire, experiencing your yes. love even. Yes. Yep. yes and this is one thing to remember for all of you is that when we have an unhealed emotion within ourselves, we will guaranteed attract a spirit who has usually a sympathetic unhealed emotion within themselves. Right? So that will actually heighten our feeling. So the feeling that James up till recently has been having is if the woman's upset I've got to solve it. I've got to do something about it now. And this spirit, Stuart, feels exactly the same. He feels like, and so he'd be, if you didn't try to solve it, he'd be saying to you, you've got to solve it now. <laughs> you know, he'd be giving you that same message that you'd be giving yourself. And see this is the thing with our law of attraction is what's happening with these spirits is they they're attracted to us through this emotion and then they will often make the situation even bigger because they are projecting their emotion that's the same as your emotion at you. So when you try to give up this un unhealed emotion or this addiction, they are trying to say, no, 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 don't you do that, don't you do that because they are actually feeling their fear about the unhealed emotion being given up. Right? So you could think of it almost like you've got a whole series of mates who are all afraid of women and so like, so if I'm afraid of women, I've got a whole series of mates with me in the spirit world that are all afraid of women. And so whenever I try to do something for myself, if any woman, if they notice any woman who's going to be triggered by that, they'll, they'll impress upon me, don't you do that, she'll be, she'll be upset. <laughs> don't do that, she'll be upset, you know. And, and what it does is heighten my feeling of being trapped. And that's actually good for me. Because then I might notice the emotion that I'm actually trapped by my own fear of what a woman feels. Does that make sense for everyone? So that's what's been going on for Stuart for some time, eight, 18 months or so since he passed. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting too, can I just note, that many of our friends on earth finish up having the same emotional injury that we actually have. And so when they pass, they will often feel drawn to us because of the same emotional injury and also they know us. And so often when they pass, they pass because, when, when, once they've passed, they feel drawn back to us because of this deep emotional hook we have between each other that we need to look at. So it's always good to examine all of your friendships <laughs> and see what 
common parameters there are in those friendships, uh, both positive and negative, by the way, and, and that can tell you a lot about what emotional addictions are still unhealed within yourself. Does that make sense? Now, over here, there were some, if we go down here to Nada, isn't it, first? I can feel a lot of self-doubt even asking this question, AJ, mm -hmm. but several months ago I had a lady who I worked with over 30 years ago, mm -hmm. who I know passed over 10 years ago from cancer. Mm -hmm. And I've been sitting, she's been asking me to contact her sister, who I was also friends with. Yep. And I've tried to find her and have not been able to. Yep. But she's here with me now, yep. I feel. Yep. Um, and she's wanting me to ask, why did she have to die of such a horrible um, illness? Can I ask her where she is right now? Have she, what's, what's the location she's in right now? Does I'm, it I'm feeling she's still on the earth plane. Right, so it's quite dark, quite dark where she is? Yeah. Okay, and so after 10 years she's still, still on the earth plane. Yep. And, and she's got this emotion of why did this cancer happen to me? Because okay. she had young children. Yeah, yeah. How young were her children? I don't know, I'm sensing like 8 and 10 or something yep. like that. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, well let's deal with this emotion. Firstly, when spirits pass, don't assume that they automatically know why they passed because the majority of them have no idea why they passed, even if they had a physical illness. See, on the earth, the problem is, what are we taught about physical illness? We're taught that physical illness is a result of some genetic problem, or, you know, in other words, we're basically taught that physical illness is a result of someone else's problem. <laughs> I have the illness, but I think it's somebody else's problem. And we often then look for a medical solution, do we not? So, you know, I've got a headache, I take a tablet. If I've got cancer, I go chemotherapy and so forth. Unfortunately, one thing that hasn't dawned on her yet and probably won't while she remains in the earth plane, but hopefully it will after this discussion, is that all physical problems are the result of emotions that are suppressed. So, let's look at her. She's, where was the cancer? Breast cancer? Started in the breast. Which breast? Left or right? right. So it starts in the right breast. Left, right. <laughs> right breast. <laughs> Myself and Mary often get confused with left and right. We're both left <laughs> we're both left handed and you know. It's interesting that 10% of the population is left-handed. Why do you reckon that might be? It's a good question to answer. I won't answer it just yet. All right. Well, I'll answer it later. It's not that important. But although it's got an important... Okay, I'll answer it now. Um, Left-sided body is the feminine side. Right-sided body is... Masculine side, how much injury on the planet is there towards women? <coughs> Large amounts of injury towards women. There's a male dominant injury, isn't there? Male dominant society? All right. So who's going to, the majority of the population is going to end up right side dominant. Does that make sense? The majority of the population is going to end up right side dominant because a big injury on the planet is towards women and about women, which is left side dominant. So most people end up right handed because of this injury that we have on the entire planet. When everything evens up, you have children born and it will be 50-50. And left handers are going to love that. Because <laughs> we are sick of having to do everything right-handed. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's just a side point. Breast cancer, right side. Right side is? Okay, so what is that saying to our friend? What was her name? 
Kathy. Kathy has got a lot of sadness, it began with, about the male to work her way through. Now what she's done with that sadness is she's then projected it into an over-nurturing thing with the male and then got very, very angry about the over-nurturing which created her cancer. Right? Now, so her cancer is all of this suppressed rage that she has towards the male because of this feeling that she has that she's got to nurture the male. And that is something that she needs to work through emotionally. First she needs to delve into this rage that she has towards the male and then she'll need to get deeper into this sadness and grief that she has about the male and how she's always had to look after the male and, and so forth. And this comes from her relationship with her father. Okay? Now what she's doing um, when she died, this, this suppression of this rage created her cancer. She actually caused her own death. Right. And there's no genetic reason for her own death, although this rage towards the male is certainly in her family, as she know, well knows. Right. So obviously there is this emotional impression of rage towards the male that actually has been suppressed very much. And it's been turned into a emotional projection at the male that the male's got to do what I want. And the way you manipulate the male in this regard is to over-nurture him so that he feels guilted into doing what you want. And that's covering over a lot of rage towards men. So if she heals that emotion, she can certainly work through this issue. But there's other issues as to why she's on the earth plane. What are her, her belief systems? Uh, what's, what does she believe? Well, I, haven't seen her for mm. I haven't seen her for a long time. Mm -hmm. but Can you remember I, her belief system? I remember that they, they were a Catholic family. Yep. And I remember the sister that she wants me to contact mm -hmm. had... Um, I can't remember the name of it. Did, illness. Um, it's a sexual herpes. Her, so and yep. she had a lot of shame yep. around that. Mm -hmm. And she, I feel that what she, she's wanting me to contact her so that, I don't know, I feel like she wants to help her or... Can I ask her why she's drawn to the earth still? Why she stays here on the earth? Does she understand she was even on the earth? Can she see that she can see her sister? She's visited her sister, right? Yes. Okay, so she can see her sister. Yes. But her sister doesn't look right. Mm. Her sister looks dark and a lot, lot different than what she looked like when she was when this mm. lady came. I get the was feeling alive. her sister is actually sick yep. as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, and is she sick from the same disease? I think she could be. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, of course, this is connecting to Kathy's grief. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what's happening here is Kathy is in the spirit world. She's got her sister on earth now dying from the same disease she died from. Of course, that's going to create a very large attraction and bond. Now, now this is why she feels drawn to talk to you and get you to contact her sister and all of these kind of things. But at the moment, Kathy has not learned why she died of the breast cancer in the first place. So how can she help her sister? Well, she, can't. she doesn't really know how, does she? she? Yeah. And I have the feeling that's why I haven't been able to find her. Yes. And what I'm, what I'm going to suggest to Kathy instead is there's, there's some bright spirits around her who have died from breast cancer. Right? That she needs to connect to. Now, if she looks up instead of down, she's always looking at the earth. She's always trying to look at what's going on with her family and friends and everything. She very rarely looks around her other than that. So my suggestion is right now she needs to look around her. Yeah. So what's she's the feeling she, now? Well, she's actually starting to smile, I feel, okay. already. She's she thought she was alone, didn't she? Yeah. She's not alone, yeah. is she? She's, yeah, she's okay. starting she's to She's got feel. all these people around her waiting to help her that she hasn't been seeing before, right? Because she didn't even bother look. She's so drawn emotionally into this stuff that's going on on the earth 
because of the same kind of hooking system that was going on with Stuart, but a different style. Obviously, this is sister to sister with a common illness, therefore a common problem. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is she's emotionally hooked into her, and she, that draws her back to the earth all the time, she, and she doesn't look up and around. You feel so embroiled in the situation emotionally, you don't look anywhere else. So when she looks up, what does she see? Lots of brightness. Lots of brightness, okay. Yeah. So there's lots of, and a few of them are spirits, right, who are bright? So yeah. let, let, let's ask one of them to come to her, and they can talk to her about why she died with breast cancer, and also about what she can do about that. And then when she knows why she died of breast cancer and what she can do about that, she can help her friend, yeah. her, her sister, yeah. Um, yeah. and help her to work through those same kind of emotions that caused her death, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Now, there's another factor I'd like to discuss with her, and that is, again, there's two types of progression. One is on this natural love part, one is on the divine love part. She's a Catholic person who lived on earth. She remembers some words in the Bible, does she? Or does she ever read the Bible? Because many Catholics haven't. Yes, she does remember some. Okay, she remembers that I said that you need to be born again to enter the kingdom of God? Yes, she does. Okay, well, these spirits will explain to her what, they, what I meant by that. So if she can trust them, that would be good. Yeah, she's afraid, but she wants to step. Yep, so step the same forward. thing to remember. If they're brighter than me, then I can trust them more than I can trust me. <laughs> she finds that amusing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most spirits find that amusing. Because <laughs> what are we told on earth? Trust yourself. Don't trust anybody else. Trust yourself. Don't trust anybody else. And one of the first things you have to realise when you pass into the spirit world, that if I'm in a darker, place, darker location and also condition, then the person who's coming to me, I need to learn to trust that person more than I trust me. Right? And that's the opposite of what we've learned here on earth, isn't it? Like, we don't trust anybody here. Like. And it's also hard to tell here who's brighter than you. There's a lot of people who fake brightness to you. And, and so you start trusting them and six months later you realise, boy, they've got a stuffed up life just like I have. Well, <laughs> that was pointless, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, you know, and then, and then uh, a year later we realise, oh, boy, he's lied all this time as well. Well, gee, well, I don't even lie, so he's even worse condition than I was. And, and this is the problem here on earth, whereas in the spirit world, the brightness betrays the condition. And it's just something to remember, of course. Brightness meaning the love state. Always the love state. So don't go all new agey on me <laughs> and say it's to do with some vibration because <laughs> it's to do with the love state of the, of the spirits. The more love they have, the brighter their condition. Anyone else would like to? Thank you. But, um, I'm just getting started, AJ, with my mediumship, so I'm not... 100% sure, you know, how much is me and how much is the spirit. Yep. But I feel I have a spirit with me, um, his name is Michael. Yep. And he's uh, in a f fairly good condition. He's not in a dark condition. Right. I don't know which level, which sphere, um, but if I was to just say it, I'd say the first or second. Yep. And Michael was killed in a car accident when he was 18. Mm -hmm. um, How long ago was that, do you feel? In 1985. 1985, so that's like 20, what, 24 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't really understand why he, he was uh, taken so young. Yep. Yeah. Is that the question he's asking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michael, you need to understand that everything that happens to us happens because of law of attraction events. What law of attraction events rely on is we have a soul. So you right at the moment have a spirit body. Right? So here's your spirit body that you can touch. You can touch that body, right? You can see it when you look down upon yourself. You can see that body. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you also have a soul that you can't see yet. You haven't learned how to see it yet and you can't see your own soul yet. But what you can see is the colours in your soul. Can you see all the colours? Like there's all these different colours mm -hmm. in your body. And your clothes, what do your clothes look like? Just ordinary. Just ordinary, just normal. like earth, just right? Just jeans, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. jeans and a what, t-shirt? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt here. 
And, and then there's colours on top of that. Can you see the colours, the colours of your clothes? Are the jeans blue? Yes, but there's colours over them. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to see is let us see self see these colours. These mm -hmm. colours are emanations of your soul condition. So what we want to do is talk about what's in your soul. Your soul is full of emotions, right? Desires, passions, longings, intentions and so forth, right? That's your soul. And if some of your soul-based emotions are based around errors, the colours look really dirty and yucky. You notice some of those colours on you? Mm -hmm. right? Some mm -hmm. of them like greeny... Browns. Like, sorry? Bra like browns. Greeny dirt, browns. Greeny browns. Like and dirt and poo. And yeah. All that. yeah. Reddy browns. Yeah. Not very nice. Yeah. Reddy browns. You yeah. see some of Reddy those? Reddy browns. Can orange. you see some red as well? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of red. An orange. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dirty so, orange. Now there's some also nice colours. Can you see those colours? You, you feel good when you look at those colours. Yeah. You see them in a the mirror sometimes. Yeah. You notice sometimes those colours? What are those colours? Pinks it? and yellows. Yep. And they feel attractive to you? Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty. Yep. Yeah. And they're a reflection of the truth mm. that's in your soul. Does that make sense mm -hmm. so far? Okay. Yeah. So your spirit body has got all these colours coming out of it yeah. that's a reflection of the truth and error that is entered inside of your soul emotionally. Even though you can't see your soul, you're seeing the emanation of these emotions in your body. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that, sum total of all that is called your soul condition. Mm -hmm. And it's your soul condition that creates the law of attraction, that creates every event in your life, including the event associated with your death. But, but he says, but I didn't do anything. No, you didn't do anything, but it, your soul created the attraction through the emotions that are stored in your soul. Now, your soul's emotions are a combination of lots of different factors of your environment and also of your family's emotions. Can, so now that you've had time to examine your family a bit as to what they really think about you, mm -hmm and really feel about you, what do you notice about your family? What do you notice about your mum's feelings? About you? Well, she loved me. She loved you. Mm. Let's go a bit deeper than she loved you. How long did she grieve for you? She's still grieving now. Ten years later. Okay. How does that feel to you? Like she loves me. That feels like she loves you. Mm. What else does it feel like? Do you like it? Do you like her grieving for you? It makes me sad. It makes okay. me sad. Wouldn't you like to be happy? Hmm. So wouldn't you like your mum to stop grieving for you? Yeah. So is grief for you loving? If grief for you is making you sad, then isn't grief for you unloving? Have you ever thought about that? Mm. No. Mm. Right? So what's happening is there's emotions in you that you believe love to be a certain thing. Right? And this is what's attracting you to the earth all the time and keeping you here is mum's grief a lot. A lot of mum's grief is keeping you here on earth, right? You mm. don't feel free to go and do the other things a lot of time in the spirit world. You've had some experience now with the spirit world, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've yeah. seen that you can enjoy quite a lot of things, right? Yeah. But you still keep getting pulled back into mum's grief, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, if mum knew about that, do you think she'd be grieving you anymore? No. Okay. No. So mum's grief is actually not as loving as what you believe it to be. It feels a bit dependent. It's very dependent. It's she set up a codependency with you. And yeah, I was her favourite son. Exactly. Can you see what might have created your death? So that I would always be there for her. What else might have created your death? What your, your mum's emotion is? Like that. she's... she's uh, I finds it hard to entertain the idea that you see, what creates a person's death, and this is something I'd like to show him, is he has a soul condition, mm -hmm. his mother has a soul condition, mm -hmm. his father has a soul condition, mm -hmm. his 
Has he got siblings, brother, sister? Yeah. Yep. Yep. They have soul condition. Yeah. Yep. All of those sum total of soul conditions create events. And the event of his death was created by the sum total of everybody's soul condition involved in his death. So the truth is he didn't need to die, but the truth is that his death was created by the sum total of the soul condition of everyone involved in his death, of which his mother had a great part to play because of her grieving ten years later. Now this is hard for him to hear, yes? Really angry. Re really angry with me. No, with, with the situation. With the situation. Mm. Well, the beauty is that once he knows the truth, mm. He'll start to understand, actually, that if we can get the truth back onto the earth, a lot of so-called accidents that happen here on earth don't need to happen at all. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that would be so beneficial, wouldn't it? it? You know, he would still be alive here on earth, right, yeah. if this had happened. Yeah. So, so it's important to come to understand the truth. Yeah. That's the important thing. Yeah. Now, if he's angry about this, he needs to just feel his emotions about this. Mm -hmm. And then go underneath the anger. What's underneath the anger? A feeling that he was taught the wrong thing and... Let down. Let down. Betrayed. Betrayed. Mm -hmm. So he needs to feel those emotions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's some bright spirits around him. Can he feel those spirits yeah. around him? Yeah. yeah. Can you see them? He's noticed them around for some time, right? Yeah, yeah. He's had a, had a lot of support on the other side. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, what he's had support from is a group of what I would call natural love spirits, mm -hmm. right? What I'm suggesting is there's a whole group of spirits he hasn't met yet that we're going to introduce to him. Mm -hmm. Can you see those ones? They're br much brighter than the natural love spirits who he's been dealing with. Yes. The natural love spirits he's been with have been what would call, they, 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 they are from the second sphere mm -hmm. of the spirit world. These divine love spirits are from a totally different location in the spirit world. Okay. They're a lot brighter than the natural love spirits, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Can you see the difference between those two? They're bigger. They're bigger, yes. taller, yeah. larger yeah. and brighter. Yes. You can see that? Yeah. Now, he needs to remember too, if a person's brighter than my own condition, then I can trust them more. Mm -hmm. And if I'm looking at two people side by side and one's brighter than that one, mm -hmm. I can trust that one more. Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. So he needs to be able to allow himself to see that. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is for him to trust them and they can show him a lot of things that he's never learnt before in the 10 years that he's been in the spirit world. Okay. All right? Yeah. Or 20, sorry, 22 years that he's been, 24 years that he's been in the spirit world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so what, we, what he can do is he can learn a lot from them about truth. And that will help him get rid of these different colours that are quite yucky in his body, right? Mm -hmm. What happens, what will happen is they'll show him how he needs to process his emotions mm -hmm. to act and release his emotions that create those colours in his body. Mm -hmm. And as he releases them, you notice that they look really pretty. You notice the colours coming, you notice the colours coming up. Mm. Off of them. Sorry, I've been talking for so long, I just need a drink. And um, he noticed the colours coming off of them are a lot different than the colours coming off of him. Yeah, yeah, they're lighter. And they're more like pearly type colours, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now those colours indicate also their condition, right? Their soul condition. And if he trusts them, they'll be able to tell him a lot about soul condition, a lot about what was actually happening. And they'll also be able to explain to him the truth about his own passing, about why he passed, in a lot more detail than I've just given. Mm. They'll actually be able to identify the exact emotions within each individual in his environment, mm -hmm. and including his own, because his own emotions had a lot to pay in it too. Mm. And they'll be able to show him all the emotions that actually finished up creating his death, the events surrounding his death. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And once he learns that truth, he'll have a lot less anger and grief about the process. Mm -hmm. And hopefully if he listens to them, he'll be able to pro progress uh, much more rapidly than he has done since he's been there. Mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. How's he feeling? Is he any more questions? Um, it, there's a bit of a, a block still on the, on the mother issue and um, what he's hearing is that she caused his death and he's... No, I'm not saying she caused his death. I'm saying that her emotions are do a dominant factor in his passing. Yeah. But it's his emotions, his father's emotions, his brother's emotions, his sister's emotions, the environment emotions, and his own choices as a result of all of those emotions that yeah. resulted in his death. But he has a lot of emotional injuries to work through with his mother. 
and these brighter spirits will actually you show him how that. to work his okay. way through that. Because yeah. the reason why he's been so attracted to the earth all the time over the last 24 years is because of this link that keeps on going through mum's grief. Yes. So he feels very responsible for mum's grief. That's right, yeah. And he needs to come to terms with the fact that he's not actually responsible for her grief. Yeah. Her grief is the result of some unhealed childhood emotions within herself that her parents created and her environment created. Okay, that's, that's clearer. That's sitting better. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good eye. Great. Is there any more questions he has? No. No. Wants to talk to those spirits? Okay. Who else? Um, if we can go, where, where, who's had their hands up? Just keep your hands up. Okay, if we go Dave and then Jen. What's the time? I just need to keep it's going. It's 5.30. 5.30, okay. <coughs> Feel free to leave if you, I'll, I'll keep going for another quarter of an hour or so. AJ, um, following on from um, your answers earlier on. Yep. Um, I get the feeling that uh, the, a key to a lot of my progression will be dealing with my fears. Yep. Now, I actually asked uh, the, the spirit attachments or tried to ask a few questions of them. Yep. First of all, who they were. Yep. Um, I got first up John, Michael, Peter, Paul, Simon, Sean, and Jack was thrown in, but I feel that was a fictitious one. Yep. I feel that there's at least two dark spirits hanging around that don't really want to come forward. And I feel these, these other guys... Uh, probably third or fourth sphere, or a mixture. Um, <clears throat> there was a chorus of them not wanting to leave me, and I asked sort of... Can, can we talk to them? If you can just talk to me about, rather than tell what you feel, because this is very dangerous for you at the moment. Okay. All right? What sure. you need to do is we need to ask them rather than... Uh, and ask them really pointed questions about their, their um, condition. Okay. Right. So they believe they're in the fourth sphere. Yeah. Why do they believe that? Because they they feel there's they have a right to be there. They feel that the knowledge they've gained that they should be about there. Yep. It's a self-imposed prediction of their condition. These spirits believe themselves to be in a location that they're not in. They believe that intellectually they've learned enough to be in that location. That's where they should be. But the truth is they're not in that location. They don't want to hear that. I know. Let's now look at the bodies. What I'm going to do is ask a person from the four sphere to come to them and now compare the brightness of the bodies. What do they notice? They notice that they're, they're vastly in, insignificant in size and colour and brightness. Okay. So there's a self-imposed belief that they have that they should be in the four sphere because of their intellectual knowledge that they've gathered while they've been in the spirit world. But the problem is they haven't learnt about how to truly progress yet. Because how to truly progress in the spirit world on the natural love path, which is the path that they are on, is via their moral condition. And they haven't even looked at any of their moral condition at this point. And they're trying to interfere with my focus. Exactly. Yeah. They don't, the reason why they're trying to interfere with your focus now is because at the moment, that one of the ways that you've maintained a connection with them is by you believing what they've been saying to you. So if they're saying to you, they're from the fourth sphere, how do you feel? Oh, this is good. They're from the fourth sphere. They're in a good condition of love. I can trust these fellas. Do you see what they've hooked into? Yes. Yeah. With you. And the problem is once we bring a spirit with the, from the fourth sphere there and compare, you can see the brightness of the two bodies and the size and everything, and it's totally different. They're mm. not from the fourth sphere at all. I, I can the, see that myself now. Yep. They're from the first sphere. Okay. And now their resistance to knowing the truth is demonstrating their true condition. Because if they're in a good condition, they'd want to know the truth of their own condition and they'd then want to do something about it. But what's happening at the moment is they don't want you to do or them to do anything about it. No, they're happy where they are. 
Why are they happy where they are? See, look at, get them to again, we look at the four steer spirit. Wouldn't they rather be that person? Wouldn't they rather be in that location? Some of them, yes. Some of them want to stay hooked into me. Exactly. So what, what we've got to start doing is asking the question of why they want to stay hooked into you. What are they hooking into? What do they get out of this relationship with you? Being able to control. Okay, they can control somebody. So they're hooked into you wanting someone else to control you. Yeah. You want somebody to tell you what to do. How did they feel when I emailed you about how much you were willing to give away your control? How did they feel about that email? Um, I know I felt confused. They felt, they felt affronted. They felt threatened. Yep. And I actually thought I had taken it affrontingly, but it wasn't me taking it affrontingly. Exactly. They were impressing upon you the anger in order for you to reject the email that I sent to you about this, this issue of being controlled by spirits. What's happening inside of yourself, you have this emotion inside of you of wanting to give up control of yourself. You want somebody to tell you what to do. And these spirits are happily connecting to that emotion with you. And they will tell you what to do. Can they see that there was a high likelihood of you passing if, they, if you had followed their advice? Beg your pardon? Can they see the future very easily? Can a, they? A couple of them can, yes. Can they see there was a high likelihood of you passing if you followed their advice? Two of them, yes. Did, can they see they wanted that to happen? I feel there's, there's two darker ones that, that aren't a part of this at the moment. They're watching. Yep. Can they see, including these other two, I mean, there's four spirits altogether who wanted you to pass. Okay. Yeah, they're aware of that. Why did they want you to pass? Because of the potential they saw in me. Exactly. They felt that your abilities would be better used in the spirit world than here on earth. They felt. And you were almost willing to do what they wanted you to do and there's a high likelihood if you had done it, you would have passed. Mm. That's how much you're willing to give up control of your own life. Can you see that, David? Yeah. Like, it's a big issue for you. Look at that. Mm. There's a deep, deep causal emotions from your childhood as to why you're willing to give up your own life and desires for others. And that comes from a mum. Can they all see that many of them have deep emotional injuries with their mothers? Can they see how angry they are with their mothers? Yes. Yep. And can they see that that anger they felt they felt you shouldn't survive on the earth either. You should be up there too where you're free of your mother. Yeah. One of the darker ones is, is resistive to that, but partly acknowledging. Yeah. So <coughs> what's happening is that they are now controlling you and you've given up control of your life and so they can do, tell you all sorts of things, including, I'm from the fourth sphere, you need to listen to me and because you're willing to give up your life, you're willing to listen to someone who just claims they're from the fourth sphere. The only way you're going to know whether a person's from the first view is by feeling your emotions about their condition. Notice, as soon as I confront them, they're angry. Mm. Now, a person in the second sphere wouldn't be angry as me confronting them. So they're not in the second sphere yet. All right. okay. And it's quite simple to actually find out their condition just by asking a few questions but you're unwilling to ask them because you want to believe they're from the four sphere. Okay. So why do you want to believe they're from the four sphere? That's the question we need to ask. I'm not sure. <coughs> it's because of what this does for you in your day-to-day -day life. 
they control you and you then get information from them that makes you feel powerful and under in control and you know what you're doing and can you see that? Yeah, you I don't know. have to make the choice yourself because you've got all these spirits telling you what to do. And I have a fear of being out of control. Yep. I'm not having direction about not... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And almost every interaction we've had is I'm trying to reconnect you with your own desire. You ask me, AJ, what do you feel my you know, well, life's purpose is? And I say, I've got no idea. I don't want to tell you anyway if I did know. <laughs> yeah. I want you to discover your life purpose. They don't want you to discover your life purpose because they won't have control. control. Right? So they'll tell you all sorts of things. Force fear, tense fear, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> they'll okay. tell you all sorts of things and if you're ready to believe it, without testing it emotionally and without asking questions and interacting and actually feeling their anger and rage when you confront them, which would actually be a big sign of where they actually are, if you're unwilling to do that, they can mislead you so much. I've had people come to talk to me about some spirits that they've said are with them and the spirits have said, I've said, where do you, where do you feel you're from? The 22nd sphere. <laughs> and I'm going, oh yeah, and you're still a female. Yes. Right? And do you still have some anger with men? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, eventually they answer yes, right? So what, what sort of question should I ask, be asking? Uh, I think you need to give up asking questions. Okay, yep. And start feeling your real emotional reason as to why you need to ask questions. Okay, so forget about about the fact they're around and just, just work on my emotions. Work through your emotions. Allow the spirits to continue connecting to you. It's your law of attraction. But, but start investigating your emotions. How do you feel when these spirits are with you? Do you feel in control, out of control? If they're helping you by in control, that means they're helping control you. Yeah. Why is that? Like, what's going on emotionally? Talk to them about that. Can you see what I'm saying? Like, use the gift you have to actually help yourself through your own emotional condition. Have that as your focus. At the moment, these spirits are talking through you to other people. Many times you give direction and counsel to other people. You are giving direction and counsel from first fear spirits to other people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And much of it is going to be incorrect as a result. Right? Now, so they're going to be correct in the, what they see in the person sometimes. But as to the true emotional condition of the person, they're not going to see it very accurately at all because often, in particular the audience here, if we ask them the question, how many people in the audience here are actually in brighter condition than they themselves are? Let's get them to look at that issue. Hmm. How many do they see in brighter condition? Quite a few. In fact, isn't almost everyone here in brighter condition than what they are? Yes. Right. in terms of their spirit body is brighter than their own. Yeah. And yet they're giving advice to other people here that other people feel like they should follow. Can you see the problem there? Yeah, they're feeling a little embarrassed. Yeah. So this is where they need to work their way through some emotions. My feelings are they can get in this brighter condition, into this like four sphere, six sphere, they can get into a 20 second sphere condition even if they wanted to but it's going to require that they start dealing with some of these emotions rather than hooking into you and your emotions. Yeah. I'm a little confused. You've, you've just said, you know, give up talking to them. And no, then you, and I then haven't said give up talking. I said give up asking them questions that you then trust the answers to. Oh, okay, right. It's, it's the trust that I need to give up. You need to give up the trust, yes, yeah. of, okay. the, of these spirits because these spirits are falsifying their condition to you and if you were trusting your own emotions rather than trusting their words, you would know it. So I should ask them questions and see how I feel about how their answers. How do you feel? When you ask them a question, how do you feel about women? Do you feel a flush of anger? If they feel a flush of anger, are these spirits in a force fear condition? No. No. You would know it straight away. You see, if you ask them the question, but then you just sit on the emotion inside and trust how you feel, not trust their answer, but what you're feeling from them as a result of the question you've just asked, right? you will be easily able to determine their condition. And oftentimes spirits in poor condition will falsify their condition in order to maintain a connection with you. And when I say oftentimes, pretty much all the time they will do that. 
Because what do they want from you? Yeah, the control and all the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you can do that, st so I'm not saying give up this gift that you have. I'm saying use this gift to access your emotions and talk to these spirits about what emotions in you they're connecting to. But don't even trust that because they are in a condition where they might lie to you. So all you need to do is feel your emotion. Do you feel when you raise a question about women, do you feel anger from them? If you feel anger from them, then you know what their condition is. Now ask them, all right, I feel anger from you. you. You just told me that it's this, but I feel anger from you. Why is that? Can you see what I'm saying? Confront the relationship that you have with them rather than just going along with it. Like imagine you're in a group of mates here on earth and you've got all these mates around you and they're all trying to lead you down the wrong path and you, you know it. So what would you do with them? You wouldn't just abandon them all, would you? Wouldn't you try to help them through? Why are you trying to do that? Why have you got this? Thing? Why are you trying to make me angry with women? Why wouldn't you, wouldn't you do that first? They're all yelling that you, you're full of crap and that they are from the fourth sphere. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, my, my suggestion to them is if they were from the first fourth sphere, they would not be yelling at me. That, yeah, that, one of them's grumbling, but the rest have gone quiet. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is the issue when, when we talk as mediums. You understand, can you see how as mediums it's so easy to be influenced by spirits believing things that are not true just because we want them to be true? And we're often not willing... Like a like, person comes up to you on earth and they, says, I'm, they say, I'm Jesus, right? <laughs> you don't just trust him, do you? What do you do? You listen, suss it out, look at his life, examine things. Over a period of how many years has it taken so far? For some of you, two, three what, years or whatever, right? And yet a spirit comes to you and says he's Jesus, what do you do? You write down everything he says. <laughs> That's what you do. You can't even see him. And yet you do that. <laughs> right? Now what I'm suggesting to you is, like, don't change how you've been treating me. If you don't want it, that's fine. But change how you're treating the spirits. They're going to come to you claiming to be Jesus, then test it all out. See what kind of things are going on. You know, don't, don't deny the law of attraction with it all, but test it all out. Make sure, so make certain of it. Do you see what I'm saying? Before you start spouting all of this stuff from Jesus, stuff from Jesus, and you write books, stuff from Jesus, and there's books, and, and then there's more untruth on this planet as a result of your one hook, which is, I want the glory of speaking to Jesus. Is it glorious speaking to Jesus? No. No, trust, most of you have felt that it's not, right? So let's go with that emotion, right? <laughs> so... It's not, right? Why? Because you get confronted with truth all the time. It's terrible and your whole life falls to crap half the time and because you follow these things and you don't know what you're doing. And, and like we had a conversation with Paula and James earlier and they said, oh, most people put on their list, who would you like to invite to dinner? Jesus, whatever. They said, oh, I don't know if we should put Jesus on the list anymore. <laughs> anyway, the, the issue is that, you see, we trust what these spirits say to us without any valid information whatsoever. And yet you wouldn't do that with someone you see on the planet. And you can't see the brightness of their spirit body like I've just talked to you, right? Unless you can see auras and whatever. And even then, what you see as auras is really just not, not the same thing as what you see when you're a spirit. You see their brightness in love when you're a spirit. When they're a spirit. So, let's look at like for if I'm a spirit, let's look at the brightness in love of the other spirits and let's trust those ones who are brighter than the ones we've been trusting because they've got more truth and love in them and we can trust that. And if I look at myself and I'm dark and I look at the other person and he's light, then I can trust him even though I'm terrified of trusting him because one of the emotions we come from from earth a lot of times is this terror in trusting other people, right? We can trust these ones. But often here on earth we do exactly the opposite thing. A person can say, I'm Jesus, to you, 
and you will go through years of validation about that. You'll go through years of investigation if you're open to even it. Most people are not even open, are they? They just write it off immediately. So why don't you write off the spirits immediately then? <laughs> because we have some emotional hooks that cause us to hook into who they th say they are. So of course there's going to be th hundreds of thousands of spirits in the spirit world in all sorts of conditions claiming to be me. Why? Because everyone on earth wants to talk to Jesus, so they say, right? <laughs> so off they go, right? Now that's what happens. And if it's not Jesus and it's the angel, archangel Michael, it's the archangel Gabriel, it's like all these different persons who, who we feel it should be, but in reality the majority of them are not the people we're thinking. And we have no idea how to tell because we are not feeling our own emotions about confronting them, right? And actually finding out what condition they're really in. And that's a big issue for mediumship today. Uh, AJ, in my case, <clears throat> would it be helpful or advisable to try and get to know my, my spirit guides and thus make comparisons? And how would I know whether the whether whoever claims to be my guides are actually telling the truth. Well, you have some guides on the divine love path. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be here, to be frank, because you're being heavily influenced by people on the natural love path, and yet you're still here. So you must have some guides who are influencing you in a positive direction as well, right? The key for you is, and it always gets back to this, I'm sorry, but it always gets back to this. You have to start focusing on your emotions. <laughs> Because yeah. if you don't, you can never feel them and you won't know who you're connecting with. And can I encourage Dave to pray a lot? Yeah. Like focus on your connection with God. Because spirits are getting in the way of that a lot. You're giving up your own desires to spirits rather than actually feeling your own desire for God. Do you see, yeah. Do you see yeah, that? Yeah, that, that makes sense actually. So yeah. let yourself start feeling and developing your own desire for mm. God. Pray a lot about these connections. But in the end, understand that it's your emotions that attract these other spirits. So you want to have an emotional interaction with them to determine their condition. And it will help them emotionally and you. So use your gift in a, method, in a way rather than just listening to what you're hearing and then going off with that. Because it's very dangerous doing that. For you particularly because your desire to be controlled. You desire to be controlled. Last time, <clears throat> last time I was up here, um, there was issue, issues with doses on the sanctuary and all that sort of stuff. And I, I woke up the Monday morning feeling somehow like uh, um, I'd been given a truth and that I'd actually been in contact with a, with a reasonable sized spirit. Was that all a furphy? Um, you also need to start trusting when things of truth come to you as long as they're harmonious with love. Yeah, I wake that morning feeling very peaceful and calm and balanced. It's not about the feelings. It's about whether it's harmonious with love or not. You see, a spirit, if you're in a needy emotional s s state, a spirit can project at you exactly the emotions that you need and you'll feel peace. All right? And you'll wake up all peaceful and everything, when in reality it wasn't something based that's on a loving basis, it was based on an addiction you have. What you need to do is now examine this feeling and the thoughts that come and compare them with what you've learned about love and free will. One thing I've been really firm with you about is your free will. Your free will, Dave, is getting harmed by these spirits constantly and you're just going along with it. You're just giving up your free will to other people. Right? And I've talked to you about that a lot, right? Yep. This is very dangerous for you to give up your free will to other people. You need to own your free will. You need to stop giving it up. I when need to own it and be prepared to make mistakes with it. Yeah, yeah, and be prepared to make mistakes with it. Connect to this relationship with God and you'll find your free will will grow and you, won't, you will stop asking questions about what you should do with your life because you'll start feeling your own desires about what you will do with your life instead. But it'll be because of that connection. It's six o'clock, so I'm sorry for those who had their questions up, but we've probably got to finish. Um, I think so. Is that right? Yep. All right, that time went fast. Time goes fast when you're having fun. And what uh, I'd like to say, uh, 
For those of you who have Christmas and New Year's and whatever, have a good time, are you? And enjoy yourselves. <laughs> and, uh, and we're looking forward to catching up with you again. It will be in the later half of uh, January that we're going to have another session. We've counselled the Jan January session at the beginning of January that we had planned. And we want to actually have just the session that's, I think, on the 20th or 21st or something like that. But it's on the website. Um, and uh, we're not sure yet what those subjects will be. But I, one of the things I wanted to do with you in the future is start focusing you a lot more on your relationship with God. All right? Because I feel many of you now are really ready for that. You're now dealing with some emotions and working your way through a lot of these things. And you're now really ready to, to sort of ramp up this connection with God. And what I wanted to do is have some uh, talks with you about God and God's feelings and personality, emotions for you and all of those kind of things. And so in the new year there will be a, a, some, a, quite a number of a series of those talks. We'll also want to do a, a talk about soulmates because many of you have been asking questions about that. And along with a group of uh, talks that we're going to have about God's laws. It will be like things like the law of desire and how powerful desire is in your life and things like that. So that's what we're thinking about for the new year. So have fun over the next few months. Oh yes, that's right. Um, we do have some talks happening uh, before the end of the year. <laughs> There's the Gold Coast on the 30th. It's um, at, so at 7, I think, 7 o'clock at night. It's a Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock at night at the Gold Coast. That's at Narang, isn't it? It's the Narang venue that we were at last time. No, sorry, Helen's Vale. Okay, I'll put the detail. I think I've already put the details on the net. Um, so I think we have room for 100 or so at this point. 100 to 150, yep. Yeah. And uh, in between then and now, there will be two talks as well, one down at Coffs Harbour and one across at Armadale as well. So if you have any people or friends around there, let them know about that. Thanks for your time, guys. Yeah. Thank you.